With everything on TV and a whole slate of new movies coming out, I don't even know what to watch anymore. Me either, but luckily we have Emily here with us to talk about Fantastic, Fantastic Fest 2021 and her review of The Black Phone, which had its world premiere at the festival. Hopefully it'll be a movie that I can add to my watch list. Let's hear what Emily has to say about it. Hey sneak peekers, I've been lucky enough to attend Alamo Drafthouse Cinema's Fantastic Fest this year, which started on the 23rd and goes until Thursday. So far, I've seen some interesting shorts, feature films, and documentaries to say the least. But one movie I definitely enjoyed was Scott Derrickson's new horror film, The Black Phone. The film, which Derrickson and C. Robert Cargill adapted from Joe Hill's 2004 short story, takes place in Colorado in the late 1970s. Children have been going missing in a suburb of North Denver, and residents have nicknamed the kidnapper, played by Ethan Hawke, the grabber. When Finney, played by Mason Thames, is kidnapped, he's locked in a soundproof basement with essentially nothing but a mattress and an old black phone on the wall, which the grabber informs him does not work. However, the phone soon begins to ring, and Finney finds himself communicating with the dead, aka the grabber's previous victims, as they try to help him stay alive and escape his captivity. Meanwhile, Finney's sister Gwen, played by Madeline McGraw, has been searching for him using information and images she has, seen in, has been seeing in her dreams. Like he did in Sinister, Derrickson makes excellent use of strategic jump scares in a few places throughout the film, rather than creating jump scare after jump scare. He tends to focus more on creating an unsettling atmosphere and building suspense, which makes it all the more scary. Derrickson and Cargill also focus on character, character development throughout the film, which makes the audience really root for the protagonist. Speaking of which, my favorite character in the movie wasn't actually Finney, but rather Gwen, who Cargill described as sunshine in the apocalypse during the Q&A following the premiere. I wholeheartedly agree with this description of Gwen, and I think she's just an all-around interesting character. Her insults were also amazing, but I sadly cannot repeat them on air, and I don't want to spoil them for y'all either. I personally would love for Derrickson and Cargill to create a spin-off focusing on Gwen, but I don't feel like that would ever happen. Also, it would be wrong to not mention the performances in this film. In particular, child actors Mason Thames and Madeleine McGraw give excellent performances, and I certainly think they're actors to look out for in the future. Ethan Hawke, who doesn't normally play the villain, also gives a terrifying performance, which isn't surprising in the least. And Jeremy Davies and James Ransone are great as well, even though they don't appear on the screen for very long. Without giving anything else away, since the film isn't set to be released until January, I just want to say that as someone who isn't normally into horror movies, I was surprised by how much I enjoyed The Black Phone. I had gone into the movie blind since I hadn't read the short story and the trailer hadn't been released. The official poster wasn't even released until the morning of the premiere, so I really did not know what to expect going into this movie. Overall, though, I would give this movie a rating of 9 out of 10. The Black Phone is disturbing and terrifying and probably not good for some audiences. But if you're like me and can handle pretty much whatever's put before you, then I would absolutely give it a watch when it releases on January 28, 2022.